the cheapest uh, possible energy source is electricity. Uh, uh, but even electricity uh, can be expensive uh, if uh, there is no targeted uh, consideration for irrigation sector, uh, like it is being done, for example, in many Asian countries, including India, even China. There is a deliberate policy to lower the energy cost so that uh, farmers can perform profitable uh, irrigation production systems. Um, in fact, one of the main reasons why uh, smallholder irrigation has expanded very uh, surprisingly, amazingly in India and other countries is the fact that um, they have lowered the energy cost significantly. And uh, in Ghana and also in Sub-Saharan Africa in general, these kind of policy uh, issues are really overlooked. Uh, the usual focus is on, on investment, uh, generating um, funds from World Bank or from uh, EFAD, from FAO, and investing on infrastructure. Um, that has not really worked significantly. Uh, what really miss, what was really missing is creating an enabling environment so that uh, farmers themselves can invest in it. You see, which is really very important. So, so a farmer won't buy a pump, uh, you know, and put up, maybe take out a loan, put up some money, unless they're guaranteed a cheap and easy power source. Yeah. So I assume what we're talking about here is rural electrification as being a primary consideration for people interested in agricultural development. Sure. Uh, rural electrification is one of the areas that will really significantly contribute to the development of private smallholder irrigation and also private large-scale commercial irrigation. Um, yeah, that is uh, it's not the only policy uh, intervention that countries can take, but it is uh, one of the major policy areas that really propels the smallholder irrigation development. Yeah. Now, those of us who've lived in Africa for yeah. some time get pretty used to power cuts. Is that an issue as well? Surely if you're growing vegetables and you need water on that day, if there's no electrical power, that could be disastrous for you. It's an interesting question. That is a real issue uh, because already the uh, power, the energy capacity of m most of the African countries is very small. Uh, but we should not stop on a short-term perspective. There are efforts to develop uh, the energy sector. There are exemplary, exemplary uh, uh, initiatives. For example, in Ethiopia, you see a big drive in uh, developing uh, dams for hydropower generation. In Ghana also, there are um, long-term and medium-term plan to expand uh, the uh, electricity service to the totality of the population. So when we are talking about the role of uh, electrification or energy in general in inducing a smallholder irrigation development, we are taking a medium, even a long term. Uh, and, and, and also in the short term, there are things that government can do already. Yeah. Now, you mentioned India earlier. Uh, what we saw in India with subsidized power and easy access to cheap energy was overpumping of the groundwater resource, which brought with it a host of environmental problems. Are you worried that the same thing could happen in Africa? Yes, it's a real concern. Uh, but I have a feeling that uh, in this respect, Sub-Saharan Africa uh, policy makers are really blessed because they have a lot to learn from the situations that happened in uh, India. So the, 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 the lesson here is uh, parallel to uh, inducing smallholder irrigation through making uh, energy cheaper, we have to also have a mechanism for recharging uh, the, 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 water resource, uh, the groundwater uh, resource so that it won't be depleted. But at the moment, uh, Africa is at the bottom in terms of development. It is not a concern over uh, drafting is not a concern, but it will occur surely if we are not 
careful about how we go about doing it. But the good thing is that we have a lot of tools and instruments that we can apply in mitigating the, the, this problem that has occurred in India. So these would be things like water pricing, water metering, regulating power supply? Um, one, one, one major one is, for example, a recharging mechanism. For so example, this is to get water from the surface back down into the, the groundwater reserve, the aquifer underneath the ground. Exactly. So, so by creating, for example, some check dams that will enhance the percolation of runoff into the ground. Uh, so such a recharging mechanism is one example that we can, we can use. Mm -hmm.